Good morning. Good morning, folks. Welcome to our home. <laughs> As you will see, we're broadcasting live today from inside our house. The, the restrictions that came out on Monday night make, makes it a lot more difficult uh, to, to meet as a larger number of people. And we want to be really respectful of what the government is asking us to do at this time. So we're yeah. broadcasting live from our home. And there's a lot of churches doing live streaming at the moment, which is fantastic. A lot of the, the reports that we're getting in both locally and nationally is that people are, are engaging in church who have never engaged yeah, before. That's great. And it's fantastic to see some of the stories that we're hearing. I heard this week of someone praying their Bible for the first time who never, who never normally would do that. And we want to be really encouraging everyone at this time. Before we get too far into this stream, go into your timeline and share this King's Live video. So I'm going to do it now. During this morning, we've got the laptop set up and we want to try and make this as interactive as we can. So we are going to be looking at the computer from time to time. But I'm going to do it now and just uh, broad see if I can share it onto my timeline as well. Also, we want to be uh, having the, uh, the, the comments that you're putting on. We're going to be trying to monitor them the best we can. Our virtual point elder this morning is Beck. <laughs> so... Hi, Beck. Morning. She, she's going to be keeping an eye on some of the comments and then we're going to touch in with Beck uh, later on just to see uh, how things are going. So I'm just going to do this now to my page. Oh, better not do it to the work one. <laughs> oh. Technology. You may have to bear with us a little bit this morning. Might be a bit bumpy with there the technology. Go. Brilliant. There we go. That's me sharing it as well. Fab. One of the things that we're really kind of keen to get across this morning, if we can, is that we understand that most people are probably watching this on the couch. <laughs> uh, maybe you're still in your pyjamas. The hashtag praising your pyjamas was uh, going around <laughs> earlier uh, this week. But our heart this morning is not to entertain. We want this to be as interactive yeah. as possible. We want the, this to be as, as normal a uh, church experience as we can make it. And that's why we want to hear from you. What's God been saying to you during this time? And just to kind of kick us off this morning, this is um, the one that Michelle Bryden had emailed in during the week. Congratulations to Michelle. If you don't know, she became a granny. A granny that's or a nanny or grandma, whatever <laughs> term we're going with. And uh, she emailed this in the week. She says, I saw Jesus with a paint bucket and brush flinging paint which was blood around, not just sprinkling it, but big splodges, huge sprays. He is more than enough to cover us all. I was reminded of the song, how precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. And that bit comes from a, a song by Bethel, which is on their Victory album, the same album that you'll find the song Raise a Hallelujah. Yeah. And it's just a great picture this morning that we are covered by his blood, not literally, but metaphorically this morning. So the plan for today is we're going to have a time of worship. In a moment, we're going to try some new technology and we'll <laughs> see how well that works. Um, Sarah is going to have a, a, a kids talk. So after the worship, you want to gather your kids around. That would be fantastic. <laughs> we're going to be looking at Psalm 34. Um, hopefully you've got the email in the week. And again, we want people to be interacting with some of the comments about what God's been speaking to you through that. Yeah. And then we're going to finish with communion. We really kind of have it in our hearts at the moment to be trying to do communion as much as we can during this time. A couple of birthdays to mention. Morvan, happy <laughs> birthday to Morvan. Uh, my mum, it's my mum's birthday as well. And there's another very special birthday today. It's Who's my birthday. birthday? It? It's Chris's birthday. Happy birthday. So, I believe it or not, <laughs> I actually share a birthday with my mum. I was born not only on my mum's birthday, but it was also Mother's Day. So, what? Well, I just like the perfect day for my mum, wasn't it? <laughs> Best <laughs> present ever. <laughs> <clears throat> before we before we start to get to time of worship, I just uh, want to kind of read something. You know, there's a lot of doom and gloom kicking around at the moment. And even if you've looked at online at some of the newspaper headlines this morning, you know, it's pretty bleak reading. And a lot of talk is that this might be lasting for months, this kind of lockdown that we're in. And there, there's a balance to be found here. We have to be operating in both faith and in wisdom. Mm. Faith's, wisdom, sorry, says we should plan for the worst case scenario. But faith says... We believe in a God that can break in and change this situation. That's right. And a few weeks back, I was sent a prophetic word by a guy called Chuck Pierce. 
And I was thinking, how, how do you best explain the term prophetic word to someone who's maybe watching this for the first time? Yeah. And <clears throat> probably the best way that I could think of, sometimes God reveals something to a person and that person then shares it. Is that a... I think that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how do you know if someone is the real deal when it comes to prophetic words? And I think that the Bible tells us we should we should always be looking for the fruit in people's lives. And for me, someone who has a good track record when it comes to prophetic words, so what I would mean by that is that the stuff that they share, that they believe is that God's revealing to them, then the, 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 there's a track record of that coming to pass, if I can put it like that. Now, the guy Chuck Pierce, for me, he has that track record, so he's yeah. someone who's worth listening to. When it comes to someone like Chuck, there's only two options, I guess. Either he's incredibly lucky and he's a really good guesser, or God is actually speaking to him, and I believe it's the latter. But this is what he said. Chuck Pierce prophesied at the beginning of the Hebraic year 5780, which was last September, that we would face a massive plague-like invasion that would test us until Passover, and that nations would come into turmoil until that time. Passover is April the 8th. So let's intensify our prayers and decrees that we can see this virus die off over the next several weeks rather than escalate. Passover is a time when people of God were protected by the blood of the Lamb in the midst of the peril they faced. Remember, life and death is in the power of our mouth. So we need to speak life. Yeah. And when I first heard that, <coughs> excuse me, the... I must admit, I was maybe a wee bit like, okay, that's really encouraging, let's kind of see what happens. Then on Tuesday, probably like lots of local businesses, we spent the morning kind of really temporarily closing things down at work because of the, the restrictions that came in and uh, following Monday night's announcement. So I was driving home from work on Tuesday, uh, around about kind of lunchtime, and I heard that I had BBC Five Live on and they were talking about the situation in Wuhan where all this started and it said that they're starting to lift the restrictions and that this was going to start on the 8th of April which is Passover. <laughs> now at the very Amazing. least that shows us there is a light at the end of the tunnel but at best, at best, maybe we believe that God can break in and change this situation. Now what that looks like and how that will work out work we don't know but you know what? I believe that God is in the midst of all this. He is still moving and he has the power to just step in and totally change yeah. this situation. And that's what we're in faith for. So this time we're going to stand, stand to worship because that's what we do in church. But I actually would encourage you, if you're at home, get active, get on your feet. Let's, let's, let's engage with the worship that's going to be taking place this morning. So I'm just going to move so I can move the camera and then we're going to pass over to Mark and Katrina who's going to lead us. Something a bit different, but then what's well, not been different <laughs> over these last few weeks, it's been it's been crazy times. It's been uh, mixed up times, <laughs> and uh, we've had to do things a bit differently. But uh, but we still <clears throat> focus on God. We still worship God, and God is still the same in all of this. Uh, so I'd invite you this morning to sing with us these songs, even though we can't hear you. Um, you know, just sing where you are and just get into a place where you're emptying yourself before God and just looking at his goodness, looking at his kindness and his solid, constant presence in, in our midst. So just join with us and just pray, Father, that you'd be with us this time as we, as we worship together. Thank you. 
God is well. Because you are beautiful. Blessings to you folks. Good morning. I've got a little friend with me this morning. You know what? This here is Colin. Colin the crow or the pelican or some kind of bird. Anyway, let's call him a crow. But do you know what? Fortunately, Colin here, he was staying with us. Well, we were having to be in our houses a little bit more, so it's really cool. So he's going to be staying with us. He's going to help me this morning with my chat to you. Now, listen, if you are little, so maybe 12 or under, I want you to come and gather around the screen that you're watching this morning. Mums and dads, you can maybe sit and go and get yourself a cup of tea because I'm just going to have a chat with the kids if that's all right. So listen, Colin here, he, this morning, oh, yes, yes, in a minute, we're going we're gonna to talk about that in a minute. He's got some things to say, so he might be a bit noisy and he might chat a little bit. So just ignore him and listen to me just for a minute. So Colin here, he's wondering, if you're feeling okay just now, this week's been a funny week, hasn't it? It's been a strange week and he's wondering if you're feeling okay. So this morning, if you're watching and you feel happy, will you put your hand up? Do you feel happy this morning, Evie? What do you think? Do you feel happy? Yeah, I feel quite happy. Do you know what? Usually, Sunday's a really happy day for us. We love Sundays because we get to go to church, we get to meet all of our friends, we get to chat, and we get to, to worship Jesus. But this morning is maybe a little bit different, isn't it? So last week you maybe watched us on the screen, but this week's even more different still because of what's happened earlier on in the week. And so that's why we are here. And so, do you know what? It, although you maybe feel happy this morning, maybe... You feel a little bit sad too. Does anybody feel a little bit sad this morning? Yeah, Colin feels a bit, a bit sad. Sometimes Colin is outside and he's flying around and he's loving the outside and he goes out all the time. But we can't do that just now, can we? So Colin, he maybe feels a little bit sad. We can give him a little bit of a bit of a stroke. No. I feel a little bit sad too this week. I've missed seeing my friends and I've missed doing all the things that I would normally do. But and it's not really surprising if you feel a bit like that and you feel a little bit worried, a bit like Colin here. Lots of things are changing, aren't they, just now? And very, very quickly things are changing this week. But you know what? We can look in the Bible and we can read story after story about all sorts of people who felt a little bit like you. They maybe felt a bit worried and a little bit sad. And we see lots of stories like Moses and the Israelites when they crossed the Red Sea and about the, maybe the disciples when they were in the boat with Jesus and the big storm came. They possibly felt a bit worried and a bit scared. But do you know what? We're going to have a little read just now about one of those stories. And this is a story about Daniel and it's called Daniel and the Scary Sleepover. Colin, are you going to help me? <laughs> He's going to help me read the story. It says this. It says things were not looking good for God's people. They had been captured and taken far from home. And now they were slaves of the king of Babylon. But God had not left his people. He was with them and he was looking after them. Daniel loved God and obeyed him. And now God made Daniel able to understand lots of difficult things. And so it wasn't long before the king of Babylon noticed him. King Darius liked how clever Daniel was. So he made Daniel his most important helper of all and put him in charge of lots of other helpers. But the other helpers didn't like this and they wanted the king to like them best. So they wanted to get rid of Daniel. So they spied on him and they tried to find things wrong with him, things that they could go back and tell the king, things that they could. But do you know what? There wasn't any. No, they couldn't find anything at all. Except maybe just one thing. Every day, three times a day, without fail, no matter what, Daniel went to his room and he closed his eyes and he prayed. They smiled to themselves. Let's get the king to make a law. Nobody is allowed to pray to anyone except to the king. Daniel won't obey this law and he will be punished. They were pleased with themselves for being so clever and they hurried off to tell the king. The king liked this idea. 
he didn't know that they were tricking him. And so he made it into a law. Everybody must pray only to me. And if you don't, the lions will have you for their dinner. Daniel heard this. He knew it was wrong to pray to anyone except God. And he had to do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if that meant that he would die. So Daniel went to his room, closed the door, and he prayed. That's just what the bad men knew that Daniel would do. They skipped straight off to tell the king, Oh, your most glittering highness, your law says, does it not that everyone must pray to you alone? Yes, said the king. Oh, magisterial brightness, then correct us if we're wrong, but it would seem that Daniel is praying to God, not to you. The king was sad. He'd been tricked. He didn't want to hurt Daniel, but he knew he couldn't change his law. So he let the soldiers throw Daniel to the lions. May your God, who you love so much, rescue you, the king said. The king went back to his palace, but that night he didn't sleep, not a wink. He tossed and turned, and finally, at the fir first glimmer of dawn, he leapt out of bed and ran straight to the den. Daniel, he cried, has your God rescued you? Yes, Daniel shouted. God sent an angel to close the mouths of the lions. And there, resting his head on Daniel's lap, was the biggest lion, purring like a little kitten. The king brought Daniel out of the den. Luke, he said, Daniel doesn't even have a scratch. The king made a new law. Daniel's God is the true God, the God who rescues. Pray to him instead. God would keep on rescuing his people. And the time was coming when God would send another brave hero like Daniel who would love God and do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he might die. And together they would pull off one of the greatest rescues the world has ever known. <coughs> what a story, eh? What a story. Did you enjoy that, Colin? Did you enjoy that, Evie? Yes. Excellent. You know, we can be a bit like Daniel. We can make a decision that we're going to love God and follow him even when times are really, really hard. And it's great to know that God can help us to be brave and strong and trust in our awesome God. So Evie's going to pray <coughs> this prayer and we're going to pray that together. If Colin would behave, he's a bit naughty, Hello, isn't he? Help, help. So if we want to just be nice and, nice and quiet while Evie prays, we're going to listen. God, thank you that this world is your world. Thank you that you have the past, present and future safely in your hands. And thank you that your love for us is bigger than we can ever imagine. We praise you now. Help us keep our eyes fixed on you so that we can be brave and strong to follow wherever you are leading us today and this week. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Evie. Fantastic. And thank you, Colin. Did you enjoy having Colin with us today, Evie? Yeah. He's a bit bitey, though, isn't he? That's the problem. He's a bit bitey. <laughs> Shall we say bye to Colin? Colin? Everyone say bye. Bye. Oh, that was great. Thank you, Evie. Superstar, Evie. It's funny, the, um, the lots of times when I've asked the kids in the past, what is it that you want to do for a living? And uh, they say things like uh, a YouTube blogger. And I say, but that's not a real job. <laughs> and here we are, <laughs> finding out that maybe it is a real job after all. So we want to, <coughs> oh, excuse me, we want to look at Psalm 34 now. And the, we sent this out in the week, so hopefully you'll have had the chance to be able to have a week and a read through it. And I was thinking that in, in some respects, the, the Psalms don't need that much explaining because they kind of almost speak for themselves don't they but we are Sarah and I kind of read it separately and we've kind of both written notes about one or two things that have kind of stood out to us so we're just going to chat this through a little bit and this is the time as well if you want to be commenting on the comments thing then Beck will be picking that up and we're going to 
hopefully get her on video conference in a wee bit to get a flavour of what you guys have been saying as well. Yeah. So the first three verses, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. <coughs> and in, excuse me, in many ways, that's quite a challenge at the moment, isn't it? To be thinking, I'm going to praise the Lord mm. at all times. I'm going to constantly be speaking his praises. But as we've often said many times in Kings, you know, worship is a choice. Worship's a battleground. And we're in the season of this is a battle. There's no point in kidding on. And how are we going to mm. respond to it? You know, sometimes we have to choose to worship. Sometimes we get up maybe on a Sunday morning if we're involved in doing stuff and because of the stuff that's happened in, in the week, you know, maybe we don't feel like praising that much because the, the weight of the world is coming upon you. But it's so important in those times that we should be pushing through and choosing mm -hmm. to lift Jesus' name higher mm -hmm. than the situation that we uh, find ourselves in. I mentioned at the beginning that, you know, we, I have, or work in the, the, the family business and in lots of business circles, there's a phrase that's been going around this week, which is cash is king. And I, I caught myself about to say it the other day, that cash is king. And the, the point of that is that the more cash that you have in your business at the moment, the stronger the position that you're going to be in to see you through the next few weeks and months, however long this goes. So there's an element of truth to that statement, is that having cash in your business is important at the moment. But I stop myself from saying cash is king mm -hmm. because in this season we have to be declaring that Jesus is king you know we said last week when we met you know he Jesus has all the authority not only in heaven but here on earth so he's the king he is above this entire situation and it's for that reason that we can give him praise today and then verse three it says let come let us tell of the Lord's greatness mm -hmm. let us exalt his name together it would be great to see some testimonies coming through this week. Um, maybe you're going to put them in the comments or you can email them into the office or, or say this email address, which we'll tell you at the end, yeah. to, to get stories of what God is doing yeah. at this time. Testimonies do two things. The first thing they do is they remind us about what God has done for us. So it, it, it lifts our spirits. The second thing that it does is it inspires others. Right. It says, let all who are helpless take heart. Mm. Those who are helpless can't take heart unless there's somebody to point them to the hope that we have. We have to be bold in this season. This is not a time for the church to step back. This is a time for the church to push forward. Mm. And when I say the church, I'm not talking about the organisation that is kings. I'm talking about the church as us, as people, as individuals. This is possibly one of the greatest opportunities we may ever have in our lifetime when people have been, are so open at this moment to be receptive to the good news of Jesus. Church, we have to take this opportunity. Mm. I cannot stress that yeah. enough. We have got to do this. We have to push forward, not pull back at this time. That's right. I, I, I just agree with Chris. You know, we, we both had the same kind of first point when we looked at this together. And for me, it was about, about me saying, what am I reminding myself of what, of what God has already done? How am I reminding myself every day? God, you've always been faithful. We've been singing that this morning. God, you are faithful. You've always been good. There's never been a time that you're not good. And so how am I reminding myself of, of those things that have happened in the past, of God's faithfulness time and time again to us as a family, to us as a church, to us as a nation? How am I reminding myself of those things? You know, choosing to praise, choosing to um, remain faithful in praising God is a powerful, powerful thing. And absolutely, what, what Chris has already said, I, I resonate with. For those two reasons, it not only encourages us, it not only builds us up, but it also builds up the others around us that maybe don't feel like that they can do that in the same way. You know, I, I read this in the message and it says this, it says, I live and breathe God. If things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. You know, this is David um, speaking out his, his, um, his decision to praise, his decision to worship and his decision to allow others to see that and to, to, for it to have an effect on them. And I just love that. And so my, my question first off to you is what attitude are you taking this morning? Are we taking an attitude of 
things are terrible, things are awful, we've got to stay in our homes, we can't get toilet roll, things are really, really dreadful. Or are we saying, God, you have always been faithful, you are never going to let me down, there's never a moment when you haven't been good and I'm choosing to focus on those things in this time of trial. What is your attitude going to be today? The next six verses you'll find have got loads of promises in it. But one of the things that really kind of stands out is a lot, as well as the promises, it requires a lot of active participation mm. from us. OK, so, for example, verse four, I prayed to the Lord and he answered. He freed me from all my fears. Mm. So what do we have to do in that situation? We have to be bringing our, our, our situation before the Lord. Yeah. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. So again, are we going looking for the Lord at this time? Mm. We have to be proactive. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. Again, prayer. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. <coughs> Verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm. Or oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. One of the questions mm. I said to say this morning, that, that concept of tasting and seeing the Lord, what, what, how, how would you explain that to someone who's maybe watching this for the first time? Well, again, I, I, I looked at what it says and, and the, the message has got a great um, uh, interpretation of this. It says, open your mouth, and taste open your eyes and see how good God is blessed are you who run to him and so when when I hear that taste and see that the Lord is good what I'm what I, I think is how are we getting in the good stuff what are we taking in to ourselves are we reading what it says in our word and you know when you when you think about that sort of analogy of eating and tasting I know for me if I don't eat good wholesome healthy meals if i go big long periods between eating the good stuff what happens is i start to snack on the stuff that isn't so good for me i grab bits and pieces here and there and i'll grab a, a bit of chocolate or i'll grab a bag of crisps rather than feasting on the good stuff and it's a bit like that with our, our spiritual lives isn't it if we if we aren't taking in the good stuff if we aren't looking to see what god is saying to us through his word then what we do is we end up snacking on the bad stuff. We end up looking to fill our, our um, ourselves with stuff that isn't good for us. And so we watch nonsense or we, you know, we, we do things and we take things in that aren't, aren't good. And so when I hear taste and see, what, what I believe that God is saying is, look at what I'm saying to you. Have a read, have a, have a take, take it into who you are. Um, dwell on it, chew on it. Just take, take it in plentifully and often and so that's what I, mm. I hear when I see taste when I read taste and see that's great now the verse 9 it says fear the Lord you his godly people one of the things that uh, I think is always important to point out is that the the word fear isn't the word fear that we understand it so we talk about fear it's about being afraid of something mm. <coughs> excuse me but the but what it means in, in this context is is having a really deep respect a reverence and awe for God so it's not about being afraid of him, no. it's, but it's recognising his majesty, his power and his authority. But all the way through those, those verses we just read, it's like God saying, if you do this and I'll do that. And at the moment we're being encouraged to physically keep exercising. And we have to be spiritually keep exercising during this season as well. With life groups uh, meeting in a different format and you're not under the same rush on a Sunday morning to, to get up and out the door, it would be very easy to fall out of good habits mm. and into bad habits during this time. Yeah. And one one recommendation, if I can, Pete Gregg, who heads up the 24-7 prayer staff, has got a great app that I've been using this week called Lectio 365. And it's basically a daily devotional thing. And it's really helpful. It's a little bit of scripture, prayer, a little bit of scripture, prayer. And it's a little really often. good, little and often, a really good discipline to get into. But I love how in virtually all those verses, it talks about prayer. Prayer is such a simple way to bring us into the presence of God. Mm. And if you've never tried it before, can I just encourage you to give it a go today? Yeah. I said of something that we, a video we put out during the week, you might not believe in God, but he believes in you. <laughs> and it's one of the best ways that we can discover him. <coughs> and that video that we put out during the week was focused around the Lord's Prayer. 
If you've never prayed before, if you don't know where to start, then you can look back through our videos and it's just a really simple guide to what the Lord's Prayer is. In verse 10 it says, Even strong lions sometimes go hungry but those who trust in the lord mm. will lack no good thing now when you first read that you could almost be forgiven for thinking it's almost like a, a blank promise from god those who trust in the lord will lack no good things if i trust in god he's going to give me everything that i mm. want but it's not that's not really what it's saying because there's lots of christians around the world that lack really basic material possessions Sarah and I went to Kenya a couple of years ago. We were due to go to Albania in May with a doctor child. We'll wait and see if that trip <laughs> happens or not. Um, but <coughs> Sarah, you've been to Albania. How simple is life for the people out there? Life, life is, is simple and it's, it's not easy. It's not an easy <coughs> life that they have, but their, their faith is astounding. You know, they, they, you'll go into someone's home and it's just a very simple um, couple, you know, couple of rooms, one or two rooms, but just they are a people that are full of faith. What they what they are understanding is that their hope isn't in the stuff. Their hope isn't in the material things. They are they are looking to God as the source of all their hope. And that was what was and Kenya was the same. We found yeah. that, didn't we? You know, people that are full of faith, even in the midst of really trying, difficult circumstances. It's really inspirational. Yeah. But one important thing to remember is that while <laughs> We have to acknowledge that some material possessions are important. You know what? Some of the material possessions that we are using this morning to bring you this church experience over over our Facebook and, and live streaming are quite important at the moment. Mm. But we need to remember that we're also spiritual beings. Yeah. So it's the spiritual needs that we have to consider as well. The other thing that, that came to me was sometimes when we ask something for God, he answers it but not necessarily in the way that we right. might expect or necessarily perhaps even want. So it was a testimony for a, uh, about a year or so ago from someone in Kings and they had a physical uh, issue that they needed healing for and they experienced healing, but not in the physical. Their healing came in, the, in a relationship that had been broken, that was restored and was fixed. They were praying for healing, but God brought in a different type of healing mm. that they needed at that time. Mm. So we have to be really open to what God is going to do at this time and in this situation. But what David is really getting at here is if we have God in our lives, we actually have everything that we need. Mm. Lots of times throughout the Bible, God promises that he will provide our needs. And I've said this many times, our needs can be very different to our wants. But at the moment, I and mean, I think we've seen a real example of that, there's been one of the the things that cause so much fear around the idea of a lockdown is I can't go to work, how am I going to pay my bills? It is unbelievable what the government have done for both the employed and now the self-employed mm -hmm. in this country. It is nothing short of miraculous and the uh, it, it's amazing. And we need to praise our, our leaders and I think from what I understand all political parties and all trade unions and lots of different people have been involved in making these decisions. But for our leaders to be as bold and courageous as they have is, is nothing short of miraculous. But one of the things that in my study Bible picked up, it says, if you feel you're not lacking something, here's three questions you should ask yourself. Is this really a need? Is this really good for me? And is this the best time for me to have it? <coughs> Verse 11 goes on to say, come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Remembering that word fear, meaning having a respect, a reverence and awe for the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Who wouldn't want to live a life that's long and prosperous? Mm. Then it goes on to say, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. We know from the book of Proverbs 18.21, it tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Yeah. So one of the things that we've been talking about a lot this week is mm. what is it that we are agreeing with? What is it that we are vocalising at this time? Yeah, there's something that I felt like God said to me, um, it'd be two weeks ago yesterday when we were um, we were doing our last turning event um, that, that will be for a wee while. And I felt like God spoke to me really clearly about not agreeing with inevitability. So, so with this situation, it looks like things are inevitable. It looks like there's no way out, that we are heading down the same um, track as China or Italy or Spain or wherever. But I just really felt like God said, you don't have to agree with inevitability. You know, just because such and such happened there doesn't mean that mm. that's going to happen here. 
Um, and I just think that that we need to remember that God is the God of miracles. That if we if we agree with inevitability, what we are in, in essence saying is, God, I don't believe that you can get us out of this. I don't believe that there's a way that you can help us. And I absolutely don't believe that. Just going back to verse three in this Psalm 34, it says, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The Passion Translation says, join me, everyone. Let's make him famous. And so for me, it's about looking at the opportunities. We've said this many times before, but, but what opportunities do we have in the midst of all this to do that very thing, to make Jesus famous? We've got an amazing opportunity here to spread the good news of him far and wide, maybe in a way that perhaps we hadn't thought of before. So what's going to change? What's gonna, what are we going to do differently yeah. after that's going to help us to do that, to make Jesus famous? Um, you know, the, the reality is that many people are in distress. There's no getting around that just now. That is the way that it is for lots of people. There are distressed people around. We are seeing people who are very poorly and in fact are dying. Things do, on the face of it, look bleak. But God. Yeah. And I think that's what we need to keep our eyes on, keep focused on. But God, you know, it says here, it says, you know, that the poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The troubles that maybe looked inevitable to him aren't inevitable with God. You know, we are choosing to speak life over this situation. We are choosing to speak life into the homes of our neighbours and our friends and the people that live around us. We are making that choice this morning to not buy into the inevitable yeah. and to walk with faith knowing that God is the God of the surprise and he loves to do that for us and for the people that we love. <laughs> Thank you, Caleb. My delivery just arrived. <laughs> Verse 14 says, Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. You know, it's very difficult at the moment to kind of to turn away from the news. It doesn't matter. You might not be watching BBC News 24, but the minute you go on Facebook or Twitter, it's just there, it's isn't news. it? It's, yeah. You're just surrounded by bad news. So we've been thinking about what? And that, that bad news brings fear not peace that's right so how yeah. do we search out the peace and how do we then work to maintain it and we had the conversation this week that you know for some people that have maybe been furloughed and and off work at the moment it's a time almost of, of enforced rest which for some people is good but for lots of people we're still working from home so sarah and i are both working from home at the moment we're still keeping the church going and um, there's some business stuff that we're still doing as much as we can from at home at this time one of the challenges that we found, and if you're working from home at the moment and got young kids, what do you do? <laughs> we're having to, to try and homeschool, we're trying to have to keep the kids going and work. And I think for lots of people, the reality is they're focusing on the kids during the day, which is, which is the right thing to do, but means then you're having to catch up in the evenings and do work in the evenings at other time to just to keep on top of things. Mm. So how do we search out peace, the quiet That's times, right in this season and there may be some practical ideas you want to share in the comments <coughs> but for maybe maybe it is that actually we do our, our daily exercise at different times so last night i just took the dog for a walk on my own for half an hour just to clear my head a bit which was great and maybe sarah will go and do something today and there's times we'll do things together but for husbands and wives that's a conversation that maybe you need to be thinking about how how do you support one another to find those times that's of right. peace yeah so Philippians 4, 6 to 7 says, this is talking about prayer. It says, don't worry, pray, tell God what you need, mm. thank him, because that reminds us what God has already done for mm. us, and then we'll experience his peace. Mm. At this time we are in, this season is a massive season of prayer. We've got to be engaging with God at prayer at this time. Verse 15, the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to hear their cries for help. Yeah. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil he will erase their memory from the earth mm. the lord hears his people when they call him for help he rescues them from all their troubles the lord is close to the brokenhearted he rescues those whose spirits are crushed the righteous person faces many troubles but the lord comes to the rescue each time for the lord protects the bones of the righteous not one of them is broken 
calamity will surely overtake the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord, mm. but the Lord will redeem those who serve him. No one who takes refuge in him will be contemned. Mm. <coughs> now, obviously, we're limited in what we can do at the moment, practically in terms of serving people. But in Matthew, in the book of Matthew, Jesus said this, When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was a stranger, you invited me in. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was sick, you cared for me. And the righteous ones replied, when did we do that? And in Matthew 25, 40, it says, and the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it for me. And Tim really encouraged us last week to think about what we can be doing. He had um, a, a number of points about being proactive, also about being creative, using those little slips mm. that we've been emailing out. You know, a phone call at the moment can make a massive difference to somebody. Sarah and Evie did a craft on the Little Fishes page this week that we shared in the King's page um, for an Easter card. And we posted that to my, to my grandma, Evie's great-grandma, down in Alloa. I know that that'll brighten her day at the moment. What are the little things that we could be doing to serve one another? Within the, re the context of the restrictions that we know mm. we have to follow, it's important that we do follow these things. Absolutely. But what can we do? I don't think you can underestimate how important it is to get a phone call, actually to hear somebody's voice. Mm. You know, and WhatsApp and text and email, you know, it's all good. And if you know me, you know I use a lot of that. But something about a phone call and hearing someone's voice in this season yeah. is really great. You know, um, the, the little slips that we gave you in your um, letters that you should have got at some point in the, over the last week. Um, we popped them around just the, the, just the, literally the street around about where we live and we had a phone call um, one day last week from a gentleman that just said he says this is absolutely great he says we don't really need anything just now but I just wanted to give you a call to say that we love that that, that was really helpful and we'll definitely keep and um, keep that in mind if we do need anything in the future it's such a powerful thing it's tiny if we can get out and just help somebody like that, it's, it's so powerful. But even the fact that he felt the need to pick up the phone yeah. and say thank you just literally for the slip through the door was incredible. So I would say if you haven't used those yet, if you haven't popped them through your neighbour's doors, go ahead and do that if you can, if you can get out and you're not isolating. Um, and it's a really powerful tool. Great. <clears throat> so we uh, were able to see some of the comments coming through, um, but not everything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, contact, hopefully, Beck via technology and just get a feel for any kind of comments that's coming through. So bear with us just for a moment while we make sure, try and get this to work. So you can chat away to Sarah. <laughs> chat, chat, chat. Coco's here with us this morning. Come on. Coco, come. Come. She's not very obedient, you can see. Zoom in on Tim. Oh, oh no, it's not Tim, it's Beck. <laughs> it's Chris's chat. I had to phone. I had to phone Tim. I had to phone Tim. Let's see if we can get it. So Beck, what kind of comments have we had coming through so far? Okay, so well there have been lots and lots of comments. Um uh, I'm afraid I didn't catch who gave the verse, Psalm 27, verse 1. But the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Mm. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And that's just a fab reminder, isn't it? Um, so uh, Rosie said, uh, remind us about the story of Esther and the phrase, for such a time as this. And I think that's really pertinent at the moment. Uh, Ruby gave a fantastic testimony about how early on in the week she was feeling lost and anxious, uh, but she remembered how God had pulled her through, and she um, looked, looked back in her Bible at some of the stories there to remind her about God's faithfulness. Um, Kelly, um, who lots of us will remember, used to be part of us in Kings, but now lives in Derbyshire with her family. She shared a testimony about how her neighbours had been helping her to find allergy-safe food for her son, Joel, um, and that every time they get low on something, that's the thing that just seems to appear outside the house on the doorstep, which is just incredible testimony of God's faithfulness to them as a family. Uh, Mike uh, talked about how uh, the verse, verse 4, the bit that says, God met me more than halfway. He freed me from my anxious 
fears. Right. Um, he said that that was one of the verses that really got him through his cancer treatment of 18 to 20 months of isolation. So his advice to us was just to simply rest in the Father's arms. Yeah. Um, and Hilary shared a fantastic suggestion in terms of something that's really helping her at this time, which is uh, a Lecto Divino app that Pete Gregg from 24-7 um, has got out and she's been using that finding that really helpful to her so I think that's something to think about um, and then lots of comments about but the Lord yeah, and, and right. that is just a fantastic phrase yeah. to keep in our heads yeah, but, but the Lord, Lord. Yeah. Um, so those are all the serious ones on the less serious <laughs> note we think it's a toucan player, and it should be Terry the toucan ah! not Colin the crow please oh, okay We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Great, okay. But fab job. Fab job from Evie, fab job from Mark and Katrina and you guys as well. So thank you so much. No pleasure. Okay, pleasure. thank you very much. Thanks, Beck. See you later. <laughs> Bye. So we're gonna we're gonna come into our time of communion now. If you uh, have got your your bread and your your juice or whatever you want to use this morning, you could have wine, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> One of the rare occasions you can use real wine since we don't have to drive anywhere. <laughs> but the couple of verses I was looking at uh, in, when thinking about communion, um, Isaiah Isaiah fifty three verse five, he was pierced for our rebellions cursed for our sins he was beaten so we could be mm -hmm. whole he was whipped so we could be healed mm -hmm. when it comes to communion there there is a, a blessing that comes and i believe a physical blessing yeah. when we take this in john 6 32 to 33 jesus said i tell you the truth moses didn't give you bread from heaven my father did and now he offers you the true bread from heaven the true bread of god is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus came mm. to bring us life. Mm. Anything that's not of that is not of God. And this time we're looking at Jesus, the sacrifice that he made, and the life that we can experience. And when we're talking about life, it's, it's an everlasting life. You know, lots of theologians are quick to point to the fact that it's not talking about, we're talking about everlasting life. It's not something way in the future that we can experience the fullness of life, everlasting life right here and even in this season but when we think about communion we think about when Jesus was sitting with his disciples and in Matthew 26 verses 26 to 28 it says as they were eating Jesus took some of the bread and he blessed it then he broke it into pieces and gave it to his disciples saying take this and eat it for this is my body so let's just do that now whatever you are your family let's just take the bread and let's just take it together And it says he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It's poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. That last line, it's poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. You know, you might be watching this today mm. thinking, there's no way God would, could forgive me if he knew all that he's done mm. or all that I've done. You know what? God already knows, yet he made the sacrifice for you because he wants to be in that real relationship with you. Mm. Maybe you today have never experienced God's forgiveness, but this, at this time of isolation, 
you know, we're isolated in lots, lots of different ways, but we are not isolated from God and we're not isolated from God's love. That's right. Let me say that again. We are not isolated from God and we're not isolated from his love. And we've talked about God uh, so many times today and, and the promises, the blessings mm. that he has for his people. If you've never made, if you've never given your life to Jesus, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, to be Lord of your life, mm. then we want to give you the opportunity to do that this morning. You know, we've touched on so many different aspects of God's love. God's love was demonstrated to us through the sacrifice that Jesus made. And that made it possible for everyone to come into relationship with God the Father. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter right. what you've done. This simple thing of bread and juice symbolizes his love for you and how he wants to be in a real relationship right. with you too. The Bible it actually says says three really specific things about this. It says that we've all done wrong things. We've all fallen short. We've all sinned, um, which is just another word for the wrong things that we've done. And we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And it says because of that, the wages of that, what we earn from that is we earn death. And so that means et eternal death, separation um, from God forever. But there's good news because it says that God wants to give us a free gift through Jesus. And that free gift is eternal life, that eternal life that Chris has just been um, talking about. And that whosoever, anybody that calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. So that can be you today. If you don't know Jesus, if you've never called on the name of the Lord, if you've never spoken the name of Jesus and asked him to come and help you, you can do that today. And so if that is you, we've just got a, a really quick prayer and that I am going to read it out and you can kind of read it sort of in your heart or you can even do it out loud if you want to, sitting where you're sitting this morning. So we're just going to pray right yeah. now. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me, change me and set me free. Let me never be the same again. Jesus, I believe that you died for me. Thank you that you rose from the dead and now you pray for me in heaven. Help me to live for you and fulfill everything that you have called me to do. I thank you that I am now forgiven and on my way to heaven. In Jesus name, amen. If you've just prayed that for the first time, if you're watching from home and you're new to us here at King's, um, or even if you're not new to King's, but you've never prayed that prayer before and you've done that for the first time this morning, we are absolutely thrilled and delighted and we would love to hear from you. And so if you want to um, drop us an email, you can do that. Um, and you can, you can drop me an email personally and it's just Sarah with an H, S-A-R-A-H at kingsinverness.com. And you can just drop me a wee email. We would love to hear those stories if you've prayed that prayer for the first time today. And just as Chris was saying right at the very beginning, if you've got other stories about the goodness of God this week and in your lives, again, pop them to me as a wee email because we are absolutely thrilled to have those emails and to, to share them with you next week. We'll be delighted to do that. <clears throat> so the only thing to say is thank you very much for, for logging in. Thank you very much for all the comments, for yeah. sharing. Thanks to Mark and Katrina for providing the worship and for Beck for, for helping facilitate the comments. The next week will probably look very similar to this week when there's a lot of people working behind the scenes to make this happen. So <laughs> And there's huge amounts of encouragement coming back um, our way. So we're really grateful for yeah. all the encouragement that people are giving us um, at this time. One last really practical thing that, as we said last week, we're unable to pass around the offering basket at the moment. <laughs> We take in a lot of money that funds the running of the church through the offering basket. So that, that is hurting us um, at the moment. So on our website, if you go into the home page along the top tabs, there is a button for giving to allow you to, to give online. If you could continue to give and support us at this time, yeah. that would be hugely appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if you're one of those people that brings your yeah. offering every week and pops it in the basket. If you could, instead of popping it in the basket, if you could do that virtually, by pressing that giving tab on the top of the um, Kings and Vanessa page, that's really, really helpful. And we would be absolutely delighted um, to take your money that way. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, thank you for being with us this morning. We, we hope you have a, a great rest of the day. Yeah. Blessings for the rest of the week. And we'll see you same time, same place 
next week. Fab. Thanks, See you guys. Oh, and bye from... Who was it? Ben? I can't remember. Te- toucan. Terry the Toucan. Yo. Terry the Toucan. Oh. Colin the Crow. Who knows? <laughs> bye. <laughs> Don't show your arm. <laughs> <laughs>